Hi Libra, welcome to June 2021. This is Teresa from Tarot by T. Before I start your reading, I want to call in some good energy. So this month we have a new moon eclipse, a solar eclipse in Gemini on the 10th, and that's favorable to your sign. We have a full moon in Capricorn on the 24th. Jupiter and Neptune will be moving retrograde and Mercury, which has been in Gemini, will be moving direct at the end of the month. And then Venus moves into Cancer and Mars moves into Leo this month. And we'll talk about that in a, in a bit. Let's see what the cards say. What does Libra need to know about love and relationships this month? What is happening in terms of love and relationship for Libra? What does Libra need to know about love and relationships? June 2021. What is coming up? See what we get. The hangman. The nine of wands. Hmm. Five of pentacles. The eight of pentacles. The seven of cups. The ten of cups. The tower. The king of cups. The two of swords. The Hermit and the Hierophant. Okay, so the Hangman is a card of your feeling right now. You start the month out feeling like you're in a state of limbo. And you, you're thinking about giving something up, making a sacrifice, giving something up for something better. But right now you feel like nothing is moving. Things are just stagnating. Um, the hangman, sometimes the lesson of the hangman is having patience. You have to have patience. Things happen when the timing is right. So if it's not happening now, it's just the, not the right time. The nine of wands, though, you know, you've been struggling with something for a while. And you might be feeling like giving up. Like, oh, nothing's happening. Maybe I should just give up. But the nine message is you're so close. Just give it one last shot and you'll get there. So if you've been struggling through a relationship matter, um, don't give up. You're good. It's good. You're going to get there. You may have to see things from a different perspective with the hangman. Maybe you're not looking at things the right way. Libra has a tendency to overthink things a little bit. But... Um, Maybe there's something you're missing, something that you need to look at that you're not seeing. The nine of wands can also represent something you thought you were done with. So it could be a relationship you thought, oh, we're done, you know, it's over. Comes back to be revisited, especially because we have Mercury retrograding this most of the month. That usually brings things back from the past to be so that you can redo them and make them better the second time around. So there could be a relationship issue that comes up again this month that you may have to deal with and you may have thought well this is over you know i'm done with that but it's not so be prepared you have the five of pentacles here in the past so you might be feeling you might have been feeling kind of isolated or cut off from loved ones um that the five of pentacles can mean financial instability feeling like you're on the outside looking in you're not really connecting with people um it could be that you're going through a depression and if this is not you, you might be helping someone through this kind of a crisis. So it could be someone in your life that you're helping through a difficult time. They, things might not be, uh, they might be going through either financial hardship or depression or feeling that they need he they need help, they need nurturing. So it's if it's not you, it could be that you're helping someone through something difficult. You have the Hierophant here, so, and you have the Eight of um uh, Pentacle, so there could be some kind of career path that you're starting, like a new path in your career. You might be dealing with an organization that's very corporate, that's very rigid. It's been around for a long time. Could be a, a health 
healthcare or higher education or just a very corporate structure, government even. Um, and maybe you feel like they're being a little bit too rigid. They're not, they, maybe they're going through some financial difficulties. Um, you might be thinking about embarking on a new path. That's at the very beginning stages. So you're kind of in transition. I feel like you're in transition this month. You have the Seven of Cups here, which is a card of thinking about what you want to do in a relationship, but you're not doing it. You're just imagining the possibilities. Maybe you have more than one option in front of you, either in a relationship or even a career path. And you're not sure what to choose, but you haven't been taking action. Because look, you've got the Two of Swords and the Seven of Cups. This is about being stuck in the choices, having to make a decision. Um, but you have the Ten of Cups here as in the near future. So you have the potential to have this really wonderful, loving connection. But for some reason, you're on the fence about it. You have this Two of Swords. This is in your uh, wish fulfillment sector. It's like, I, I know I need to make a decision. I know I need to break the stalemate. But I, I can't make up my mind what I want to do. I don't know how to do it. I don't know. Like you're waiting for the other person to reach out to you first to make it easy. You know? But somebody's got to break the, break the stalemate because it's just like this... They're waiting for you, you're waiting for them, nothing's happening. You have the tower here in your negative thinking sector. So you may have come through a very um, major event where you feel like my life was kind of like everything's falling apart and I'm rebuilding from ground zero. Like you may have gone through some kind of breakdown or breakup um, where something is just, or going through just some major changes. Or maybe this new, this love um, needs to be totally restructured. You may have to go through some, see things from a different perspective. The tower is like an awakening, seeing the truth. Um, sometimes it could even be a blow to your ego. But whatever the tower takes away, if you've been through some kind of trauma, maybe you're still depressed over something that happened in the past, um, the tower break something that needed to be ended or it takes away what's no longer working in your life so that you could build in a new direction and build something that's a better fit for you. In your environment, you have this King of Cups. So this could be a counselor or someone that you can talk to, someone who's very sensitive, someone um, who might, maybe there is someone in your life that's going through a difficult time and you're helping them through some kind of traumatic um, situation. Something in their life is breaking down. Um, they could have like a health, a physical problem. It could be a physical breakdown or even a mental issue. Um, and you're kind of there for this person, but you're not sure what to do with, about it because you have the two of, two of swords. It's like, I don't know what to do. Then you have the hermit here as an outcome. The hermit, is about taking time out to think and to really think like, what do I want? What do I need in a relationship? I know I need to make some changes. I know I need to take action, but I don't want to do that unless I'm sure of what I want or, or I'm sure of what's right for me. Because you have this Ten of Cups. This is the goal, to achieve the Ten of Cups, which is pure love, not just based on physical attraction, but you know, genuine connection with someone. You can have that. But for some reason, you're not, you're taking time to think. You're not choosing it yet. It's like you're imagining what it would be like to be in a relationship like that or to have that even in your current relationship. But you realize that to do that, you're going to have to make some major changes. And maybe that's why you're on the fence. You're not willing to make those changes just yet. So right now, you're just kind of thinking. Um, maybe it's good. Like the hermit is also about going to someone for advice. So if you're having a problem, making a decision, coming to some kind of conclusion, go to someone, you know, go to a counselor, go to a friend whose opinion you respect, bounce some ideas of someone else, get another person's perspective. And I think that will help you to make a decision and figure out what direction you need to take. So let's see what the astrology has to say. So you have this new moon in the ninth house. And it's conjunct Mercury. Now this whole this eclipse, 
something maybe eclipse sometimes a solar eclipse eclipses a male figure out of your life it could be a friend or a business partner or um even a relative um and mercury retrograde could bring someone from the past back into your life so nine the ninth house is about higher education teaching learning spiritual beliefs um, I feel like you're having, like, um, you might even decide to go tra do some traveling or to get into a new spiritual path. Maybe you want to explore different types of spirituality. And this new this eclipse is giving you that. It's also a house of publishing. Maybe you're deciding to teach, the you know, things that you know, or you're getting involved with um, higher education, maybe... Um, either if you're older, maybe to, you're going to be teaching a class, or if you're younger, you might be taking a course that's going to expand your talents. And you're going to have, or it could be that the ninth, um, you could be writing a book about something, or dealing with global, you know, maybe starting a blog that where you're reaching a global market, or starting a YouTube channel, or doing some marketing, because the ninth house is communication. It's a communication house. Um, it's a high, it's you know it's kind of related to the third house but it's more long distance it's more of a higher at a higher level um, so it's not just chit chat you know with your neighbor over the fence it's more like reaching out to a global to other cultures other you know going beyond your comfort zone and you have that opportunity um, the only problem is Neptune is squaring Mercury and the new moon from the sixth house. So there could be some confusion in your work environment. Maybe you're not sure, you're not seeing things clearly at work, or you're, there's, you might feel there's some deception or misrepresentation going on at work. Um, Jupiter is also there, so Jupiter is bringing you opportunities. But with this Mercury square Neptune aspect, um, at the you know mo through most of June, you really want to... Um, Bounce your ideas off other people that are not involved so that you can get a more realistic perspective because you may not be seeing things clearly. Um, you have Saturn in the fifth house, and this new moon is trining Saturn. So there could be a relationship or a romance. The fifth house has to do with romance, children, um, projects that are fun, creative self-expression. So you could be starting something where you'll have an opportunity to start something that you really enjoy. It could be a romance. It could be a new relationship that's at the beginning stages. It could be a new creative project that you really have fun. It could be a new relationship with your children even. Um, but whatever you're starting with this Saturn aspect, it's going to be in place for a long time. And it's going to require hard work, but you're going to love it. It's not going to feel like work because when you're doing something you love, it's not work. It's just, you know, you're you just love it. You're in your... your joy. Uh, that's the house of joy. Now you have Venus is moving into Cancer and it's going to be in your 10th house. So things are going to get more harmonious once Venus moves into the 10th house in your work environment. It could also bring a connection, a love connection through work or through the work that you do. Um, you could even be doing something more creative. Your, your work could take more of a creative turn where you're doing, you're using your creativity more on the job or in your career path. Mars has been in the 10th house for a couple of weeks and it's been shaking up your career. Uh, you may feel like I'm, I have to take action. I have to change my life in some way. I'm tired of doing the work I'm doing. I need to do something more exciting. You know, that, that really speaks to me. Mars will be moving out of the 10th on the 12th, two days after this moon, this new moon, and moving into Leo. Um... And when it does that, but before it does that, it's going to oppose Pluto. And Pluto is in your fourth house. So there could be some, you might be fighting with people at home. Like there might be some um, work-life balance challenges. Like someone at home may require a lot of your attention. There might be, you know, power struggles about what you need to do at home versus your responsibilities at work. Um, but I think you're coming, you're going to come out of that. The thing is, don't don't let yourself... Um, Mars opposite Pluto can can cause an angry reaction. You know, you might feel like rebelling against a bully. Somebody might try to bully you, or you may try. You may feel like someone is manipulating you in some way, and it's making you angry. 
Um, Venus is sextile Uranus, so Venus can bring unexpected love. Uh, and it could be something that really shakes up your world because Uranus in the eighth house is the house. It's the house of intimacy, transformation, sex, death, transformation, other people's money. And Venus is in um, your 10th house. So there could be some changes with finances around work. Um, it could also mean that you get the financial support unexpectedly to, to work on this creative project. Like you're thinking you're not going to get the money to, you don't have the money to do what you want to do, but suddenly something happens unexpectedly. Um, and you ha all of a sudden now you have the money, uh, and you can, you have the opportunity. You never know what Uranus is going to bring in. But in the 8th house and in Taurus, it's going to bring in some kind of financial security. And it could be unexpected. Chiron's in your 7th house. Um, so you have some wounds around relationships that you have to deal with. But it's sextile Saturn in the 5th house. So there could be a new romance this month that helps you to heal some of those wounds. Um, so if you've been wounded in love in the past, this new relationship could be someone with someone who's very mature and responsible and not something like a fly-by-night type person, someone who is reliable. And this, if a new romance starts this month for you, it could be in place for a long time and it could be a healing type of energy for you. Um, Mars is then going to move into Leo. And when it does, it's going to be in your 11th house. And the full moon in Capricorn is happening in the 4th house. So something is completing in the home. Um, so if you've had, and also with your career. So you might be finishing up a project, maybe a home-related project, or dealing, whatever the problem was, whatever the situation was, you're seeing it from a more realistic light. And you know what you have to do to take care of it. Because Capricorn is always like, I'm going to take responsibility, I'm going to fix it, I'm going to take, make it work, I'm going to put the energy in. Um, so something is completing at this full moon, and that could re it could mean that you get rewarded for the work that you've put in, um, you solve the problem. Um, although I still see Venus and Venus in the 10th is opposing Pluto in the 4th, so there could be some, like if there's a new romance in your life, it may be taking you away, or a cre if it's not a romance, it could be a creative project at work or something that you really love doing. It's going to take you away from people in the home. And so there might be some power struggles around that because you're like, oh, you're, you're so busy doing all this. You're, what about us here at home, you know? So you could be neglecting the people that you live with in favor of this either new romance or new project that you just love, that you're just like all enthralled about. Um... Now, at some point this month, Mars is going to oppose Saturn. Um, Mars is, at the full moon, Mars is at 8 degrees Leo, and it's opposing Saturn at 12 degrees Aquarius. So you could feel that, uh, then that's in your 11th and 5th house. So you could feel that um, you, you don't have time for love because Saturn in the fifth house like I have all these responsibilities and there's going to be you're going to feel blocked like I want to work on this thing I want to make this happen but I'm just so busy with work I can't I have no time and Uranus is squaring Mars and Saturn from the eighth house so you have to ask yourself am I using work as a way to avoid intimacy am I burying myself in my work because I don't want to deal with connecting with someone on a deep level just putting it out there um, because Uranus wants to break you out of that and one way or another it's going to break you free of the restrictions you've put on yourself that are keeping you from having fun from connecting you know having a romance in your life having fun in your life having pleasure it's it, you can't be all work and no play so just just putting it out there um, but Venus is also trining Neptune and so Venus in the 10th, turning Neptune in your 6th, you have an opportunity to get into work that you really love. There's going to be some uh, component. With Neptune in the 6th, in the, um, you really want to serve others in some way. Um, but this time it's going to be more creative. You're going to feel like the people you're working with have, there's more harmony 
in this new situation. And you might even connect with a soulmate through the work that you're doing or through a friendship, um, through the groups that you belong to even. Um, in any case, Venus is, it, it's going to bring love to your career uh, or creativity to your career path. And it's going to feel like a dream come true, like your dream job. You could, you could find your dream job. Um, that doesn't feel like work, you know, even though, because you love it. So, I feel like you're going to come out of the hermit mode this month. You're going to make a decision. You have an opportunity to really find that dream job, find that intimate connection, break free from all work and no play, uh, and find, but it's going to involve major change and seeing things from a different perspective. And, um... So don't so get off the fence. Don't um, don't block yourself from having. You know, don't don't get yourself so busy or so um, occupied with work that you don't have time for you, that you don't have time for fun and and love in your life. You have to schedule that as much as you schedule work time. You have to schedule downtime, and family time, and you know romance time depending on your situation, whether you're married or single. You have to build that into your schedule or you, it won't happen. And you have the potential for love this month that really feels like a soulmate connection. So um, talk to someone, bounce your ideas off someone else, get some. If you need clarity to or help with making a decision, don't be afraid to reach out to other people and bounce your ideas off on them and see you know, get some other perspectives and it will help you to make a decision in the end. So I hope you enjoyed this reading, Libra. If you did, click on the like button, click on the, on the subscribe button, leave a comment if this resonated with you. I love reading all the comments. And thank you for supporting this channel. Thank you for watching. If you're new, welcome. If you'd like a private reading, click on the link in the subscription, in the description box, and it will take you to my website and we, we can get you on the schedule. In the meantime, um, enjoy June, and I will talk to you again next month. Okay, bye now.